former wife of the late Brendan Kangongolo Simbwai, Ms. Gertrude Namatara Simbwai, 65, a Zambian-born national who hails in the western province of Zambia at Simungoma of Sesheke district, is calling government to assist her since there were promises of her other benefits, such as the car and a house by former Namibian president, Dr. Semnuyomo, in 1999. I just want a better accommodation and a car, which I was already given by His Excellency Dr. Yeah. Sam Nyoma in Windu. <music> Mrs. Mbwai told Caprivi Vision that she is not happy with the house given to her by Katima Molilo Town Council because the house is full of cracks. It does not have a water tap inside, but only outside in a toilet. I drink water from the tap, which is in the toilet for cooking and drinking. And this toilet is located outside the house and is in a poor condition. You must help me a bit in the house. Even the food. The house looks old and is not having windows until when she decided to buy windows and fix them on her own, as pointed by Ernst, the grandson of her late sister who is staying with her. This is a time that the government should uh, wake up and uh, do something. Because my grandmother, she's uh, very much in need. And uh, looking at where she's staying now, the house she's living in now. I mean, this is the house like from the shant compound. She's drinking water from the toilet. And uh, the toilet is outside the house, and it's very dangerous for her, like especially night time when she wants to go to the toilet, she can be killed anytime. So uh, I'm requesting the government to do something. She said former Caprivi Governor Bernard Sebalatani, who is the councillor of Katima Mulilo Urban Constituency, told her not to be paying for water and electricity, but to her surprise, all these opportunities were turned down by the Katima Mulilo Council. Life is so difficult for me since I lost all of my kids. My husband was so caring for me, and to find myself in this situation, I feel so bad, also for not knowing where they buried my lovely husband. <laughs> uh, that is Charity and Faith Missions Church. Mm. Yeah, Pastor Chipape, they are doing a very good job. Uh, they have been looking after the old lady when she was sick. They used to take her for prayers, sometimes supporting her, being with her. So I, I thank God for them, because they have been there to support us. Namatama married her late husband, Kangongolo in 1960, and they both have one daughter before his arrest in 1964. It has been allegedly reported that Simbwai was taken to Pretoria in 1978 is when they killed him. Government of the Republic of Namibia has named several buildings after Brendan Simbwai, such as Brendan Simbwai Square in Winduk, which currently hosting the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Safety and Security, Lands and the Ministry of Trade and Industries. June this year, a brand new largest Navy vessel, a ship for the Namibian Navy, was commissioned by President Hifike Punye Pohamba in the name of Brandon Simbwai. While in the Caprivi, the first new primary school constructed after Namibia's independence in Katima Mulilo was also named after him as Brandon Simbwai Primary School. During the time when my husband was in prison, Dr. Sam Nyomo and other Swapo fighters were really taking care of me. Every month they used to supply me with cooking oil, beans, maize meal and many more. In his autobiography, Dr. Sam Nyoma has mentioned that Mr. Brendan Simbwai was immediately arrested by the South African police in 1964. Late Brendan Simbwai is a Caprivian true leader 
who started to fight for the independence of Caprivi Strip in 1960. His death is not recorded in the Namibian books of history. Ms. Simbaya told this paper that since 2005, he have been finding ways to talk to the Namibian president, Ifike Punye Pohamba, through the Caprivi Regional Council and Swapo Party office in Katima Mulilo, but none could help her to meet President Pohamba. She said, the time she was given a house and a car in Winduk, she was sick and she suffered a trauma on how her husband was killed. It was very difficult for me to go and stay in Winduk, she said. I was scared all the time that I would also be killed the way my husband was killed. Despite to any of her demands from the government, this 65-year-old Miss Simbwai is getting a $2,000 every month from the government as her income for living similar to many other Namibian war veterans. <music> Meanwhile, Miss Simbwai further told that the Katima Mulilo Town Council did not honor the agreement or the preferential treatment given to her in a meeting held between her and the councillors, which was chaired by the former governor of Caprivi region, Mr. Bernard Sibalatani, as saying she will be offered a house and at the same time she will not be paying for the electricity and water as these bills be reckoned or covered by the Katima Mulilo Town Council. This is the agreement which Ms. Simbuai is claiming and has thus said these promises by the government need to be put on a written document. She, however, revealed that among councillors of KMTC, councillor Michael Mudabeti was attached to facilitate proper maintenance of her house, which condemned that this was moving slowly, and she said Mudabeti brought to her a bag of maize meal, cooking oil, and new main entrance door of her house. Contacted for comment to hear how true were Ms. Simbuaya's claims, Mr. Michael Mudabeti, chairman of the management committee of the Katima Mulilo Town Council, declined to comment. I have got nothing to do with Caprivi Vision. I have to get involved myself with the Namibian issues. I am not a Caprivian. I'm a Namibian. You are for Caprivi issues, said Mudabeti. <music> Mudabeti has been giving same answers to Caprivi Vision reporters when asked for feedback. Since he occupied the public offices as principal of Caprivi Senior Secondary School and Swapo Katima Mayor and as chairman of Katima Council. However, Mr. John Likando, the Katima Mulilo mayor, confirmed to Caprivi Vision that his council was still investigating pending issues on whether she was a true beneficiary or not. She's a destitute and abnormal. There are other people within her family who want to take advantages of her.